Before watching this video, we highly recommend that you take four minutes to watch our standard post allocation training video. This provides a full description of post allocation features in Greenglass. Your library's retention commitments can be adjusted in two ways. Participant libraries can increase their retention commitments voluntarily. More typically, participant libraries can reject retention responsibility for titles that have been allocated by SCS. Both scenarios require the library to generate precisely formatted lists of titles and submit them to SCS in an Excel or .csv format. It's expected that you will use the individual library features of Greenglass to generate these custom lists. Keep in mind that this work can be undertaken only after your allocated retentions have been loaded to Greenglass. We'll look first at how to increase your retention commitment by navigating to the Query Builder under the Analysis tab. Once allocation has occurred, you'll find five new query options related to allocated retentions. To increase your library's retention commitment, and to simultaneously increase the number of protected titles in your shared print project, start with items that have not been allocated for retention anywhere in the group. Once you have retrieved this list, note the number of items and the percentage of your collection that this list represents. Keep in mind that your voluntary commitments will be added to the list of items that SCS already allocated to your library for retention. Some libraries may choose to retain all of these, but we anticipate most shared print participants will seek to reduce the size of this voluntary list by invoking additional query parameters. Some libraries volunteer additional retention commitments for resources that they would retain regardless of the group's retention strategy. For example, titles with significant local usage, books in specific subject areas or locations, or any other parameters that will suit local constituencies. Remember that the corresponding list of items appears at the bottom of the right panel of the Query Builder. When you're happy with the size and scope of your list, export it by clicking here and download your list by clicking here. Before delivery of your voluntary commitments, please delete all columns except title, bib record number, and WorldCat OCLC number. Use Excel's Remove Duplicates feature to deduplicate OCLC numbers. And finally, please add a fourth column and populate every row with the name of your institution. If your library wishes to reject retention responsibility for specific titles, you may do so. There are several reasons that allocated retentions may be rejected by participant libraries. These include titles that have been withdrawn, have been lost, or have gone missing since your extract was delivered to SCS. Non-circulating or damaged books that will be unavailable to your partner libraries. Outdated, ephemeral, and non-scholarly books that are simply not appropriate for retention on behalf of the group. And finally, editions that have been superseded by an edition that is being retained somewhere within the group. To begin this phase of the analysis, choose this query parameter to generate the list of items that have already been allocated to your library for retention. From here, you can use additional Query Builder parameters to identify titles you wish to reject. You can also use an exported list of retention candidates in coordination with your local ILS to identify withdrawn, missing, or non-circulating titles. You will report your library's rejected retentions via a spreadsheet much like the one described a minute ago. Here again, SCS will need a list that includes the title, the ILS bib record number, the WorldCat OCLC number, and the name of your institution. Please add a fifth column to log the reason for rejection. 
Here again, use Excel's Remove Duplicates feature to deduplicate OCLC record numbers. Keep in mind that your rejected retention commitments will not be reallocated for retention by another library. Therefore, participant libraries should seek to minimize these rejections. The deadline for reporting your adjustments to SCS will be determined by your shared print project manager. A couple of final details. Retention commitments are determined at the level of the title holding or bib record. If your library has multiple items associated with an allocated bib record, all of those items have been flagged in Greenglass to be retained. In the case of multi-volume sets, this is exactly as it should be. You are expected to retain all of the volumes in the allocated set. However, if your library owns multiple copies, you are only required to retain one of those copies. To identify possible duplicates of titles allocated for retention, filter for yeses in the possible duplicates column of the exported list. With regard to multi-volume sets, SCS allocates retention responsibility with as much proficiency as the data allows. If just one participant library holds the set, it will be allocated to the holding library for retention, regardless of volume details. If multiple participant libraries hold a given set and the enumeration, or volumes held, are identical, the set will be allocated to one of the holding libraries according to the usual allocation strategy. If multiple participant libraries hold a given set and the enumeration does not match, but it's possible for our system to determine that one library holds a superset of volumes, the set will be allocated to the library holding the superset. And lastly, if multiple participant libraries hold a given set and the enumeration does not match and it is not possible for us to determine whether one library holds a superset of volumes, the set will not be allocated, even if it matches the parameters of the group's retention model. By taking this conservative approach, no holding library in the group will be inclined to deaccession their own set, which may contain unique content.